The Buddha replied, So it is, Sabuti. Most wonderfully blessed will be those beings who, on hearing this sutra, will not tremble, nor be frightened, nor terrified in any way. And why? The Buddha has taught this sutra as the highest perfection. And what the Buddha teaches as the highest perfection, that also the innumerable blessed Buddhas do teach. Therefore it is called the highest perfection. Subhuti, when I talk about the practice of transcendental patience, I do not hold on to any arbitrary conceptions about the phenomena of patience. I merely refer to it as the practice of transcendent patience. And why is that? Because when, thousands of lifetimes ago, the Prince of Kaliga severed the flesh from my limbs and my body, I had no perception of a self, of being a soul or a universal self. If I had cherished any of these arbitrary notions at the time my limbs were being torn away, I would have fallen into anger and hatred. I also remember Subuti that during my five hundred previous lives I had used life after life to practice patience and to look upon my life humbly, as though I were a saint called upon to suffer humility. Even then my mind was free of arbitrary conceptions of the phenomena of myself, a being, a soul, or a universal self. Therefore, Subhuti, Disciples should leave behind all distinctions of phenomena and awaken to the thought of the attainment of supreme enlightenment. A disciple should do this by not allowing their mind to depend upon ideas evoked by the world of the senses, by not allowing their mind to depend upon ideas stirred by sounds, odors, flavors, sensory touch, or any other qualities. The disciple's mind should be kept independent of any thoughts that might arise within it. If the disciple's mind depends upon anything in the sensory realm, it will have no solid foundation in any reality. This is why Buddha teaches that the mind of a disciple should not accept the appearances of things as a basis when exercising charity. Subhuti, as disciples practice compassion and charity for the welfare of all living beings, they should do it without relying on appearances and without attachment. Just as the Buddha declares that form is not form, so he also declares that all living beings are, in fact, not living beings.